thin film interference. I'm going to show you how to solve thin film interference problems. So thin films operate under very similar principles to other interference problems in that we're, we start by looking at path difference. So let's say we have a source of light. Maybe it's the sun. Maybe it's something else. We'll just go with the sun. And it shines light down. And that light encounters a thin film, say a layer of ice. And so here's our layer of ice. This is obviously not to scale. And some of that light will reflect off of that surface. And then it will enter an observer's eyeball okay, or some machine detector. And some of the light, when it encounters this interface between the ice and the air, is going to get transmitted. And then it has another choice, if you want to use that word, uh, when it encounters the interface between the ice and the liquid water at this surface, and some of it's going to reflect, and then it's going to encounter um, the surface, and then some of that light will get transmitted. So these are just two possible paths. There's other uh, paths that this light could take, but uh, this light will, uh, will be transmitted up into the observer's eyeballs as well. And so um, what we want to do first, like I said, is derive a formula for the path difference in this physical situation. So let's go ahead and give these um, distances some names. So we'll call the distance from the source of light to the surface of the thin film uh, a distance A. We'll call the distance from the thin film to the observer distance B. And then by convention, the thickness of the thin film is given the symbol T. Not to be confused with time, in this context T means uh, the thickness of the thin film. So the light that gets uh, that reflects off of the surface will ha go a distance, we'll call that distance A plus distance B. And then the second distance will be A plus a distance of T plus another distance of T plus a distance of B back up to the observer. Now, we're not taking into account trigonometry or anything. We're basically assuming straight lines, but we don't want everything to overlapping, so I'm drawing them at a little bit of an angle. Okay, so the path difference will be one distance minus the other. So I take this minus this, and I get delta D equals 2T. So the path difference for thin film problems will typically be twice the thickness of the thin film. So we can replace delta D in the usual formulas for constructive and destructive, destructive interference with 2T. So let's do that. So we would normally have delta D equals M lambda and delta D equals M plus one half the wavelength, but we'll, instead of writing delta D, we'll write uh, 2T. So 2T equals M lambda and 2T equals M plus one half the wavelength. So lambda is the wavelength of this light. Um, so normally we would associate this formula with constructive interference and this formula with destructive interference. However, with thin films, it's not that simple. So there is a problem in that when light reflects off of a surface, it can get inverted. And what we mean by inverted is that the electric field reverses its direction. And that occurs when it is reflecting off of a higher index of refraction than the medium that it's currently in. So you check the index of refraction for this medium, air, which is probably close to one, check the uh, index of refraction for the thin film, compare the two, and if the thin film has a higher index of refraction than, the, uh, than this medium, then it would be inverted. And then same thing down here, we look at what the thin film is on top of, find the index of refraction for it, compare it to the index of refraction for the thin film, and if what's below the thin film is a higher index of refraction, then this um, gets inverted as well. So um, what you have to do is count the inversions. It's going to be 0, 1, or 2. And if it's 0 or 2, then your physical intuition of this is constructive and this is destructive would be correct. However, if there's only one inversion, then we would use the uh, these get switched. Okay, So count inversions. And uh, if one, then switch the formulas.
Okay, you'd use this one for constructive and this one for destructive. So be careful, don't skip that step. Okay, so path difference of twice the thickness, count the inversions and then um, switch if these formulas around if needed. And then the third twist for our thin films or uh, sort of special case for thin films is that we need to be careful about what we mean when we write wavelength. Okay, what is that the wavelength? Is the wavelength out here in air or vacuum or whatever? Um, is it the wavelength in the thin film? Is it the wavelength of whatever the thin film is on top of? Okay, well, it is the wavelength within the thin film. So let's, um, I'm just going to use MAT as the subscript. So wavelength of the material of the thin film. And because the wavelength gets compressed within the thin film by the factor of the index of refraction for that material, we can rewrite this in term these formulas in terms of the wavelength in vacuum. So uh, M times wavelength in vacuum over N. So I'm just replacing this with this and then twice the thickness will be m plus one half where uh, times wavelength and vacuum divided by n. Okay, so these are the two equations that you use. Again, being careful to uh, count inversions. So the ind indices of refraction come into play twice, both once when you're uh, counting the inversions and then the second time when you're uh, using this formula that N is the index of refraction for uh, for the thin film. Okay, so that's the, those are the general principles. In another video, I'm going to show I'm going to give you an example of using these formulas that I've uh, that I've shown you, uh, and I'll show you how to how to solve a problem. Okay, thanks for watching.